the way to fix it for the draft, because I don't think you can fix it in the draft. Uh, anyway, welcome everybody to our second match of an, an all-Chinese Dota Day and for the G1 League group stages, and ha it's appropriate, it's a Chinese tournament, so DK facing off against Tang Fu, I'm LD, and joining me is Gods, together we're David and David, casting on behalf of Beyond the Summit, and Gods, this is an interesting matchup, Tang Fu with the quick first pick Templar Assassin, but before we really look at the draft too much, DK a team that looked really sharp in their second game against Orange, but just got completely outpicked and sort of outplayed in the first game, or maybe I'm getting the order mixed up. Uh, but their yep. draft was a little bit weird, and they got punished for it, so some growing pains for DK. But on paper, this could be one of the top teams in China. Not now, but they could be. I think with time, like you say, um, they they went for the Wisp Tiny back in game number one against Orange with their first two picks. We actually see Tong Fu banning out the Wisp. I'm not a very early Wisp ban, something you'd maybe ban out with your, your, your second set of bans, but... Banging out right off the bat, and I mean, it was kind of DK's downfall in the game that they lost. So, uh, both these two teams, just so give people a bit of context, both these teams sitting on a draw currently. A draw gets you one point, a win gets you three points. So, um, having having a win, a win and a loss is better than having two draws here. So, you really got to get those two O's against certain teams. Um, and with both teams sitting on a draw, Tongfu who drew against Natural 9, DK drew against Orange, arguably probably the stronger team there, so DK getting that result, they're probably in a better position here. Um, this is an important game for both these two teams, though. They want to get a win. Tongfu, they want to at least walk away with a draw, I feel. Right, you know, DK may have the big na the big names and a team that can, can be viewed as a, a potentially up-and-coming or a future powerhouse, but you still got to make it out of the group, and, and Tongfu a team a little bit... They're not going to be a top name or a, a viewed as a, a serious threat to a team like Orange or DK, but if you steal a match off of DK, if DK loses this suddenly, they only have one point and Tang Fu leaps ahead to four. It's a big deal to actually take a win, even just getting one game, not taking that, that 0 2 loss, pretty significant as well for the group stages. You, it's, it's a fairly forgiving group stage format. Only one of the five teams for each group gets knocked out, but nonetheless, you want to advance as a one or a two seed. It will make your life a little bit yep. easier in the playoff bracket. Either way, the draft now well underway. Very mobile lineup for DK. And, and a hero that we saw be incredibly effective in YYF's hands, the Bounty Hunter. Yeah, Bounty Hunter right off the bat. And I think this is a hero finally sort of getting recognized for its true potential. It did it the international. Uh, it got picked up non-stop. But immediately after, both Asian teams, European teams sort of stopped picking it for a while. It's come back into the limelight now. And with good reason. He's just so powerful with the new... With the new sort of changes to the way you get XP and gold in, in fights, it's going to be a sort of momentum snowball effect coming into play with the track gold as well on top of that. So really it's a much more kill-heavy sort of metagame at the moment. And this is something which we saw IG really adjusting to with picks against LGD. So Tongfu need to make sure that they don't give too much away to DK let's, to be too aggressive with these picks here. Let's be clear. It's an IG metagame because, hell, that's what they love to do is go yeah. kill. Go kill early and often, uh, but do it in a in a mistake-free kind of way. And well, bounty hunter the perfect here to have in that situation. And Batrider getting the ban out. If we look at Tong Fu's lineup, I will say a pretty good lineup to discourage aggression. They have the Templar Assassin, who on paper is difficult to kill. Now, if the Iron Shell is there, things get a little bit dicier. Uh, and of course, Tidehunter and Chaos Knight, tanky, pretty mobile for the Chaos Knight, and lots of AOE lockdown. DK a little bit lacking in that. They don't have any stuns right now. What they do have is some good sort of mobility. And we'll have to see, is that mobility enough? I'm expecting that they're going to go for a couple of range supports with some lockdown here yeah. for the second stage of the draft. And that's what we see Tang Fu banning. Is, the twin -headed dragon is this another burning, burning Queen of Pain? I, we solo mid with Queen of Pain, and that was the game they destroyed Orange with. So maybe we see him play the solo mid Queen of Pain as more a farmer, and they get some kind of safe lane hero which isn't a hard carry, but maybe sort of just like a, a mid-game utility type hero, something with some discern, something which can sort of be a frontline brawler. Like the pan they had the Brewmaster. Maybe this is going to be another Brewmaster for Super. He played that so freaking well against Orange. They could go for a very similar draft to the game they won against Orange if they won here. And I, I actually thought that was, that was their best player in that game, or at least that hero did the most as far as how much farm he was given and what kind of an impact he had with that farm. Burning had the amazing score. He played incredibly well, but he had a slow start. I think that's something that's easy to forget when you look at that crazy final scoreboard. Like you said, 21-1 and 19, or something are crazy along those lines. Super's micro is fantastic. His timing on when to use the primal split was really solid, and, and he just made the most of every single ult. That's the downside to pandas. He's kind of boomer bust. If you don't get off good ults, then you're just really not a very effective hero. But the pandas available, are they going to go for it? 
The one thing I'm... that it does, it makes them fairly farm dependent. I mean, Darkseer needs quite yeah. a few levels to be effective. Bounty Hunter, pretty farm independent. But then the Queen of Pain and Panda, that, that, that's a lineup that won't really be able to get going until the mid game. It's farm dependent and it's a strong mid game, but it's not as if they're banking on a late game carry. They can't, the anti mage getting banned up by Tong Fu, so despite the Queen of Pain, Darkseer, and Bounty Hunter already. A somewhat mildly greedy lineup being there. They're still worried about the burning anti mage. Then they ban up the two supports. But <laughs> if DK get the panda here, we'll see that safe lane panda. Darkseer, I'd say already Darkseer is almost definitely going to be in the jungle. When you've got the bounty hunter to go in that off lane, it's kind of where he shines. He's just so hard, hard to kill, so tricky. We saw YWF just maximizing his efficiency there. It's a Sven, though. Safe lane. Is this going to be a burning, burning Sven? Sven? It be super. It could be super still, but. Super we saw Sven. <laughs> we saw Joe play Sven and just completely roll through LGD with an aggressive draft. And this is a similar sort of thing. You get the movement speed from Track, the movement speed from Warcry. Dare it I, seems movement speed is just too Ember. Dare I say it? I think they were watching that series. I'm just going to go out on a limb yeah. and say I think DK may have gotten a peek at that. Now, the Chinese teams traditionally in older versions have run Sven as a support. I don't think he really is a very effective one, to be honest, but we'll see. I mean, I guess it's an out. They don't have many other strong support heroes right now. They're going to need some sort of hard support with this last pick. Maybe even something just like a Crystal Maiden or a Shadow Demon. Uh, something that gives you some reliable laning presence uh, and doesn't need items, because even Sven definitely does. This is curious, though. Uh, the one other thing I'm wondering is who is going to lane against that Templar Assassin? A Queen of Pain is not a bad matchup, but... It's yeah. not really a dominant hero to shut down the TA. It's not like a Batrider or, or to a lesser extent, the Venomancer. And if you let that TA get rolling, she can be pretty annoying when you have a team with one stun with a 15-second cooldown. Well, Keeper of the Light's the last pick. So there's your sort of dual lane, I suppose, with the Sven Keeper of the Light most likely going to head into that safe lane. It looks like, yeah, we will see Queen of Pain up against the TA. I agree. Not the best matchup for Queen of Pain, but Queen of Pain can hold her own, get some farm, get slightly out farm, and it is going to be what? Burning Sven. Burning Sven. Wait, wait, wait. Let's, let's just say that again and let it sink in. Guys, you're about to watch a Burning Sven. Okay, with that being said, Burning Plain Sven, QQQ, or 357 as he is also known, on that Dark Seer. Kung Fu Panda... Oh god, who is this? My, I'm having a bit of a brain fart, but the bounty hunter being handled by him, is that, R, that ROTK playing the bounty hunter? Yeah. Die, uh, the man of many names, we'll just call him MMY for now, playing the Keeper of the Light, uh, playing that hard support role, and, and when I say hard support, I mean this is like diamond level hard support. He, he's going to have to buy a lot of wards this game, and Bernie, of course, that presumably the hard carry Sven. <laughs> we'll see how they do. This is very interesting. And Tongfu, they rounded out their lineup with the Disruptor, a very yeah. disruptive hero for this DK squad. <laughs> um, be interesting to see how it goes. I actually did have some Dota TV audio issues. It turns out they've been fixed now. But for Tong Fu, it's how, under his new name, with a bunch of Ys, playing the Chaos Knight, he's going to run right into ROTK, who immediately wind walks up. It looks like Tong Fu want to make something happen. Illuminate being thrown off preemptively just to deter Tong Fu from engaging in. And keep it light with a couple of clarities. That's not really a big loss for her. And she's going to force some tangos out right off the bat from Tong Fu. Sancheng doesn't want to go too far. He's playing the Lena. Elsewhere for Tong Fu, we've got Long DD playing the support disruptor. Tidehunter in the hands of Veronica, or Chan, the, for Chan, the former world elite player. And Tong Fu's Mu is going to be playing the solo mid Templar assassin. Interesting. So for our uh, burning heading down to the the suicide lane, he's gonna be with Die and is it dual lanes? It looks like it is. It's well not dual lanes, it's a bounty hunter solo in the safe lane, it's QQQ in the jungle, as you were suggesting, and then a dual lane bottom. They're anticipating some sort of solo and for the moment they get the Tide Hunter there. This is a good matchup for DK. They're gonna be pretty happy with that. It means burning can farm, but they don't have to devote a safe lane to him. Now the question is gonna be, can this bounty hunter actually live, even though he's in the defensive position? He's up against the tri lane with a sentry ward and with lots of, lots of sort of lockdown. And already he's a little bit aggressive with his positioning. Yeah, looking to get very, very proactive here and maybe make something happen right off the bat. As uh, this is, I, I feel for DK though, having the bounty hunter up against the tri lane is the matchup they wanted. Even with that sentry ward being placed down right away. Uh, the killing potential of this trialing, I mean, it's not really at its strongest at level 1. They want a couple more points in the Lena's nukes. They want... Uh, Long Didi actually hasn't decided on a skill yet. He's got it now. He goes for the Kinetic Field. And uh, we may you know, see some aggression if they can chip down it. 
our DK's bounty hunter. We could see some really cheeky play once the Sentry Ward disappears, with the Darkseer throwing an Ion Shell on Bounty Hunter, and a Bounty Hunter just waltzing around while their supports don't have Sentry. So, they're, they're is, gonna have is to- Is your make... overlay correct, by the way? Uh, nope. Thank you for mentioning that. <laughs> oh, he gets trapped under the tower, and they look to go on him. Will this be our first blood? Leg Strigger is gonna hit. He's just in range of the ward. There's your first blood. First and just blood. in the nick of time, the overlay is removed. Uh, the stream only gets up to a, a slow boil before before it's fixed. So we did catch the LD, first one. LD the Xsplit noob strikes again. <laughs> <laughs> between between LD with Xsplit and me showing up on time to matches, I mean we are your professional casting duo here beyond very, the summit. Very very professional uh, and very much <laughs> very much using the correct overlay. And now my end game audio stops working. I just noticed that as well. Uh, we'll toggle that on mic and well we're back in business. Ice Frog, if you're watching, please fix the audio bug. It's so distracting, and then I do things like mess up my overlays because I'm worried about the audio. Ay ay ay. Either way, Shriek and Toss coming out. Just a little harassment from RTK. They get that early kill, and now Sangchain waiting for the ho almost gets the. I think if he hits that stun on Super, Super actually dies because Lena has a DD rune, and Moo might have been able to cut off the path of retreat in time. Dodging a bullet, and this is the nice thing about the tri lane is once if you're up against the bounty hunter. You can start checking those runes. You don't have to leave three heroes there to shut them down. Yeah, he, he doesn't. They, they don't need to. They can even roam towards the mid lane if they want to put some more pressure onto Super. If they take a couple stunners there, they can maybe get him at, take him out before he he uses that blink. Uh, they can even try use Moo to try bait him into blinking for a kill. And it looks like they do just want to stay top for the moment. They could even roam, look for QQQ three five seven playing that jungle dark. So he's always going to be on pretty low HP when you're in the jungle. And he's also another possible kill for these support, but for the time being, they don't want to, they want to prevent Bounty Hunter from getting farm and XP, but when he's in that safe lane, he can sort of just sit at the tower and just stay as close as possible. He's already getting level three and a half, approaching that level four mark. I would love to see that that sort of great uh, underground railroad approach that we saw in the International, just hang your way through and backstab him. Kinetic Field to start this off, actually. Cast Bolt needs to hit, pulled back in, followed by the Cast Bolt, only a one second stun, but the Light Striker Ray. Right? As well as the Dragon Slaver there, they pick up the kill. It's only a level 1 Dragon Slave. I was surprised at how much damage it did, but in the end, Bounty Hunter just not able to live. Yep, and uh, meanwhile, let me haven't looked at too much at, yet. Is this Tide Hunter at bottom line having a better time than the Bounty Hunter in terms of XP, as well as a couple CS here and there? I feel this Tide is not really being put under much pressure by this Savan Keeper of Light Jewel, and he is getting blasted down, nuked down now. As you say He's, that. <laughs> yeah, as I say that, he gets completely nuked down from about full HP to a couple hundred. He's going to actually have to go back and heal. That's kind of what they need to be doing, but they can't do it from level one. Sven Coddle, once they hit level three, we're looking at a level two Storm Bolt. You get a couple, two points in Chakra already, so Sven can just spam that Storm Bolt as much as he likes now. Wow, Sang Shane, second time he's denied a rune, either by just denying it directly or taking it away from that solo mid. Really nice play. In this case, it was actually Darkseer who was trying to camp out the rune for super. The one the, the one lane we haven't looked at at all is going to be it's going to be this middle lane where it's Mu going up against super and so far so good for both heroes. Nobody really winning the lane super not controlling the runes yet largely because of that tri lane, but he's really relying on his team, I guess, to sort of uh, or Mu's really relying on his team to keep the rune control up. Even with the traps, it's still difficult for TA to match Queen of Pain in that department. And that's I feel like that's sort of the X factor for DK. That's how they can deal with this tri lane and in a minute or two, it's just have Queen of Pain roam up there, set up some kills. They are still fairly underleveled. Only 4-4-3. Four, four, and three, Or 4-4-2, four, four, rather. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. Queen of Pain roaming me up when you have a Darkseid coming into gank as well. I mean, Surge can be a very effective offensive tool. He's even got an early point in vacuum. We're not going to see him just going the 2 in Surge, 2 in, two in Iron Shell. He may get a second point in vacuum at level 5, and with that... Definite potential for kills to go down at top lane with Queen of Pain roaming. Queen of Pain is just bottle crowing for now, but maybe when this six minute rune comes up, we'll see some movement coming out from Super, who's about to getting close to that level six mark. Well, we're, we'll probably see some uh, movement up top lane as, oh, this time he's not caught in the kinetic field. In fact, Darkseer is here, and that's the counter gank. That's the power of this lane. And once they get that kill on the Chaos Knight, he supports or mincemeat potentially for Darkseer. Although QQQ really not choosing to commit to that second level of kills, but gets the kill, shuts down the aggression, and now RTK, a bit of a bad start, but still hitting level 5, getting close to getting track, and as the tri lane gets a couple of kills, but is it really enough? Are they content with this? It's getting to the point where soon we're probably going to see Superhead up there, uh, and it might be up to the Tidehunter to kind of respond to that aggression. 
Yeah, Tidehunter who is getting close to the level 6. He'll have Ravage up in the next minute or so. And he's going to have to pick up a TP, maybe help out his team. Alternatively, Queen of Pain comes bottom and they look for a kill on Burning or on MMY. Because Burning right now is just farming away. 27 and 13. Deni denies as well as last hits. He's all over it. Burning does find a DD rune. Decides not to come bottom. Tide's still a bit too far from that level 6 maybe for Super's liking to try and gank. I think Super's just content on trying to shut down Moo as much as possible in this mid lane, but uh, so far hasn't been too successful, and you just can't win that matchup 1v1 as a Queen of Pain. Yeah, you can farm, you can't stop that Templar Assassin, you can't really uh, reliably outlast it or without relying on the Bottle Crow, and that uh, does monopolize the Crow for your team. Even then, sometimes you just can't get in good range uh, to Spirit Pain, they, all the creeps at the right time. And TA can even push reasonably well with the Sideblade Splash, so it's a lane Moo is winning, but not by an overwhelming margin. Burning is farming, and he's level 5 along with Die. so this is the nice thing about the dual lanes is DK are really pulling ahead in terms of experience. Well, I say dual lanes, uh, it's more of a dual lane and then a jungle, but we have seen They QQ may go in on Veronica here. Veronica's taking a lot of damage. Burning's not going to commit. The long Stormbolt cooldown is really what stops you getting those kills, because one Stormbolt alone with an Illuminate isn't going to kill you. You need a second one, and unlike Chaos Knight or something, you don't have that shorter cooldown on the stun. Oh, he almost gets sniped! Very close. Very, very close, but lives by the skin of his teeth. One more stun, he's dead though, so this is really tied on. He, he needs to, I don't know, he's level 6. Maybe he's trying to wait for the Queen of Pain to come in for a gank, but there's not much he can do here with this low HP, because a stun, he, he goes down. Right, I mean, or maybe the tri-lane leaves, but for the moment, it, oh, glimpsed back into the Chaos Knight, four second stun, no one second stuns this time, but Super is here, and Super has a DD doing a stupendous amount of damage, one hero taking big damage, and the Deafening Blast, or not the Deafening Blast, what the hell am I talking about, that Illuminating Blast coming out from the Keeper of the Light, super to follow it up, and that was the counter gank potential that we expected to see from DK, whereas for the Tidehunter, he stayed bottom, didn't really have the mana, was not even able to get to the side shop to get a TP scroll, and in fact the Courier had been ferrying something top, so Tongfu not having that solo available to counter gank, and it cost them big time, DK now leading 4-3, to three. Great little, great little response from them, and I think the tri lane a little bit over at this point. And it's smart how this DK dual lane works at bottom by constantly harassing Tidehunter down low. Even if he wants to TP top when he has that Ravage, he's always going to be low HP. He's using up his mana to farm as well, so they're sort of putting enough pressure on Tidehunter at bottom. Sure, he's getting farm and XP, but he's not in a position where he can go TP top and gank. Maybe it's going to be the TP. The TA, the Templar Assassin, who uh, goes and looks to help out the top lane or the bottom lane, because Tidehunter has been put under a lot of pressure. He, he he can't go bottom and then expect to be able to TP into another lane, because Sven, with the Keeper of the Lights, is really keeping him too low to do anything. And Burning treads up. What's he going to go? He is doing the same build where we see multiple points in Warcry, but he hasn't been playing as aggressively as we saw Joe do with IG. It looks like Burning quite happy out farming their opponents at the moment with that one team fight at the top lane. It's it's not as good of a lineup for that level of aggression. They did they, they have the bounty hunter and the Queen of Pain can be a decent ganker, but she's not a frontline tank like a Night Stalker and there's not as many stuns on this team. They don't they have Illuminate Blast, great defensively, great damage, but we're not looking at a Alina or another AoE stun. We're not looking at a team that just has that next level of aggression that we saw from IG. So I think I think this is the right response, not to just try and force too many fights, because Tongfu are actually the team better of a team fight lineup at this stage of the game. Mu on the middle lane taking some decent harassment, double traps from him, and that is going to thwart the aggression for the moment. And uh, this, the trio from Tongfu, they're roaming through the enemy jungle, looking for the Darks here or someone, not going to actually find them. They're coming in mid. Oh, ROTK spots them before they come in, giving super time to actually blink on out of there. Well, well scouted, bit of luck going the way of DK, maybe. Um, but either way, it's it's a wasted time for Tongfu. They had three heroes walking around the jungle. L long DD TP towards the mid lane, and Tongfu, I feel, are just wasting a lot of time not being efficient with their movement around the map. It, it, it is hard to be efficient with your movement when... Oh, look at oh. Sang Shang! That's the Ion Shell Darkseer. Pretty much a three second from zero to no HP. Instant death. You just can't roam by yourself against heroes like this. Not as a support Lena in a tri lane. Four seconds stun onto the bounty hunter. Under the tower, but the surge is there, and the surge will be enough to s save him. Again, not that efficient. Middle lane Moo, there's the Queen of Pain ult, and snipe by Super. He pays for his aggression. Keeper of the Light was there, helped to defend that, and Templar Assassin was having a good start. Now the Courier in some danger. No, it'll be okay in the end, barely. They could really not afford to lose that Courier. Tong Fu, we still haven't seen this this safe lane farming Tai do anything yet. He's just sitting there continuing to farm. When are they going to get him involved? 
Yeah, they, they need to get him involved. I think they just want to hear a constantly contesting the farm of Burning. They know they, Burning gets left there alone. It's not going to go well for them, but Tidehunter can't be that hero. Maybe you send the Chaos Knight bottom against him. You need to send someone else. Tidehunter needs to go in these fights. And when you've got the aggressive heroes like the CK Lina, you want to be taking fights with whenever you've got that Ravage up. But instead, Tide's spending a lot of time at bottom. He's got Long DD behind him now, so maybe they're going to make a go on Burning. They may want to bring some more heroes here, because already Keeper Light backing up the Sven and there's potential for more heroes to be teeping in, but they, they need to make something happen, Tongfu. They can't just afford to give Burning more and more time to get close to that BKB. Top lane, the backstab attempt. This Here's the Ion Shell and the Bounty Hunter. The cheeky little combo. Let's see how quickly he reacts. Very quick reaction from Hal. He immediately backs off, but not farming, and there's two heroes devoted to this lane where no farming is happening. So, a bit of a, again, like you said, just not really being that efficient with their time compared to DK. Yeah, and with with this, Tongfu are just playing too much of a static game with CK kind of farming as much as he can at top, TA at mid, and they've got Tidehunter kind of doing it bottom lane, but that's not really what the Tongfu lineup's designed for. Oh. Maybe they're trying to just focus on those mid-game teamfights, but it's not going to happen. They're just getting found, caught out by DK. DK aren't going to give them the chance to take those mid-game teamfights because they're ganking. They've already taken out Chaos Knight. They want Sanching as well. The movement speed is there. Stun hits two, and Sanchen maybe going to be enough to keep him alight. Here comes Veronica, finally coming in with the Ravage. He's going to get the Darks here, as well as the Bounty Hunter. No Bounty Hunter. 10 to 15 HP. He's still alive. Sanchen had dust, never used it that entire fight, but Bernie gets caught by the Glibs. Pulled back in and disintegrates. Very nice play by Long DD, and completely winning them that fight. And all of a sudden, scores 5 to 7. Chaos Knight goes to the bottom lane. Super was not there, and I think that's the big thing for DK. A nice trick they used, though, and this is this is the versatility of Keeper of the Light as the support is. It makes your carry somewhat into a Spectre. Middle lane, though, dive onto the MMY. The, the die goes down. Move finally finds an opening, and he pounces immediately, pick up that kill, getting close to his Blink Dagger. I did really like how DK used their Keeper of the Light, though. They recall Bernie into the fight, so let him farm until the last possible second, then recall him. Very similar to Spectre with Haunt and instantly able to join the fight. It doesn't work, but I think it's it's one way that Keeper of the Light really excels as a support, is he lets your carries farm a little bit more than yeah. they might otherwise be able to. And in late game, it's one slot they don't have to use for a TP. Uh, we, I, it was one of the recent games where we had the Keeper of the Light just able to pull the carry into any fight, and you, you have that extra slot. I mean, even if you're just getting a small cost-effective item, it, maybe it means you can have trades instead of boots to travel in the late game. And maybe it gives you just that ex get extra little small cheap cost effective damage item, but it can really make a big difference for your carry heroes. Bounty Hunter waiting mid, looking to potentially go in on Mu, and actually he's spotted by a Sentry Ward from the high ground, and he might pay for this. No! Just barely Mu able to clip him right as he's running up the hill. And, well, Tongfu showing their range a little bit. This Disruptor pick really working out well for them. He is going for the Glimpse Max, which is what you expect. The downside is, they get that kill, but it's so hard to push into a tower. Just Keeper of the Light alone, pretty much going to limit this push. Although now, with the Glyph being forced, let's see, will it be enough? Veronica, Ravage cooling down about 30 seconds, and this is one thing Tongfu does have going for them, is they can kind of put the Tidehunter in the front lines and usher heroes away. Yeah, this is this is the best way to push with the Titan just standing there. There's going to be a TP in. It looks like DK want to try and make something happen here, but it's Queen of Pain TPing and they're not going to follow it up with any aggression here. Despite DK, they've grouped up as five. Maybe going to go for a counter push here. And Tong Fu decide they don't want to take this fight. Ravage just about to come back up, but Tide's TP bottom. He actually misses the oh, tower tonight no. bottom lane. He TP just for the tower tonight, doesn't get it. And now, with no him Ravage. bottom, DK can take mid lane. No, yeah, no Ravage. He's coming mid, but he's going to be there too late. And this means they just have to forfeit the tower, so a big loss on multiple fronts. Losing the tower, basically, they, there's no way that the DK is able to get that tower unless the Tidehunter TP's bottom. If they're pushing into this into this Tidehunter, they can't initiate it on him, and if they're not initiating on him, he's going to ruin their aggression. So, really costly TP there. Yeah, it's big that's economic hurt loss. Tong Fu. Two towers, two towers given up. Burning still no BKB, which is kind of the bright side here. But DK seem content to just keep grouping up, going for another tower, even with Ravage on the playing field. This team fight, in theory, for Tongfu is scary. They've got the Ravage, they've got Static Storm, the Silence, AoE Silence to fold up. They can kill heroes like Queen of Pain. They can prevent Darks here from saving teammates, using the vacuum, surging his teammates out of there. But DK still managed to sort of uh, be the ones in control of this game for the time being.
it's going to be a really fast hex from Super. Looks like it anyway. Ultimate Orb already picked up. This is a four hero smoke bait. Let's see if DK is going to take that bait. It's really early for four heroes to be missing off the map like this. And you kind of got to figure that they're ganking, but let's see how sharp is DK. They're sitting at the tower. Burning is actually in a bit of a pickle here. Illuminating Blast, not going to be enough. Burning gets pulled inside of the, light, the Thunder Dome and now brought down by the Chainsaw. This TP should most likely be canceled. It's not vacuumed in. No wall just yet. The Ravage, but a great creative paint all from Super and continuous Illuminating Blast doing tons of damage. Now the track kill likely to come onto Veronica. Burning has bought back for this one. Rejoin the fight. Triple kill for Super. Another Queen of Pain flexing her muscles. Now onto Moo they go. Blinking forward. The trap not enough. Moo picked off. Four heroes dead. And at least two track kills for Super. I said he was going for a fairly quick hex. Gods, he's already got another 2100 gold. Yikes. Super is getting bigger and bigger. And... That was, I mean, smart buyback coming from DK, and not to mention, Queen of Pain, as soon as this fight starts, drops down the Shadow Strike on TA. That Shadow Strike, strike lasted so long that TA couldn't get off any blinks in that fight, because TA was off to the side getting ignored, but still couldn't blink out of there. Gets tracked down, and DK in trouble. It's actually Super, though, who's going to get caught out. May have overextended here. He's 7 and 0. Oh, it's a big streak he's just given up. Big four second stun coming out from Howe, and uh, he's going to go down, but you know, he's got himself a big, big piggy bank. The good news for him is that was mostly reliable gold, and I don't know if it yeah. actually ate into that quota, but he, he still got 2k. I mean, he was up to maybe 23, 2400. So it doesn't really lose that much, but like you said, it's a long kill streak to end, and the big thing is also going to be they get a ton of experience for that. Yeah, ton of experience is really what they need. Even with Queen of Pain just losing 100 or 200 gold there, nothing really much to dent into it. Moon needs to start farming towards his BKB, I feel, with this TA. He's, it's what's going to allow him to fight. He's going to have to just rely on the damage from Refraction and Melt. I don't feel he can go aggressive with a Desolator or Daedalus. He needs his defensive items first. There's plenty of DPS coming from behind with the CK Lena. You've got a Ravage, you've got the Disruptor Ultimate. He can't just be thinking. He can take these fights without any survivability. And... For DK, they just need to keep looking for these 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 fights, look for these pickoffs. But Tong Fu, they want to go for another smoke. Three heroes smoked up, and where are they going to head? This is this is something we did see a lot of from Tong Fu. First in the International Two East qualifiers, then in the in the um, in the International Two is that they really rely on these smoke ganks in the mid game to sort of set up their aggression. They don't normally pick heroes like Night Stalker who can just run around the map and and set up tons of kills, but they use smoke to get things going. The downside to doing this is, if it doesn't work, you're wasting a lot of time. And for the moment, not being super effective, they're, they're starting to really fall behind in gold and experience, and even though it's a 9-11 to game, even though they have most of their outer towers up, it's the inefficiency. And against a team like DK, who's generally very efficient, this starts to add up pretty quickly. Yeah, this is not going to be something that Tong Fu kind of want to be trading off. We saw it a bit against N9 where they just weren't really efficient. They were on the back foot a bit. I, even when they were getting ahead in that game too, but they weren't getting the levels they needed. I remember how on his Naga Siren was really underleveled late into the game. And it those levels and farm, that's what DK are really good at making sure they have on all their support heroes, all their utility. They're just they're being cost effective with their time. As we ROTK at top lane gets a track down, backs off, and this track is just so annoying because your opponents know your every movement. They know when it's safe to farm, where they can TP, what fights they can take, and it just makes it so hard for Tongfu to find the engagements thereafter. And it also means if you stand near your team, then they know where your team is as well. Uh, and and for this team, for the most part, they want to be grouped up. They want to be fighting as a unit. As a squad, it's not its not a team with a Night Stalker and a Bounty Hunter. It's a team with a lot of stuns, a lot of AoE. A team that is really at its best when they're grouped up. And well, they're not able to do so so far. And this buys time for the Darkseer, who's now got a Vitality Booster. Who's getting close to that oh-so-important level 11. For him, it's really going to be 12. Because he hasn't gone for the two points in the ult as quickly as possible. He's gotten a little more... He's gone for more of a, a mid-game skill build. Yeah. Just a, a, a skill point of difference. But it means until he hits 12... That wall's not going to have a long cooldown, but once it does, the grouping up gets a lot trickier for Tanku. Yeah, until that wall is going to start coming to play now. He's got the first point, which uh, isn't quite enough for the team fights. 15 second duration, not the best, but doubles at level 2, and when that's up, maybe DK will look for some bigger, bigger scale team fights. Sure, they've got the Bounty Hunter, Queen of Pain, they've got plenty of potential for little pickoffs here, but. They're spending most of their time just farming up their next level's items, and I think the main item they're missing is the BKB for burning. Uh, he's also at level 10, despite the great farming start he had at bottom lane. I mean, it quickly got turned around on him with two deaths, and it's a much slower BKB all of a sudden. 
It is Super who's filthy rich though. He's got the Mystic yeah. Staff, he's very close to the Void Stone. A Hex this early in the game, a hero like TA can't jump in anymore. She has to have her BKB to do it. Otherwise you jump in, you get Hexed, and you die. And the same is true for even for CK. He's tanky, he won't be as easy to bring down, but they have some decent burst, they have some decent damage. This early hex, well, I think once they get it, we're gonna see DK look for a pickoff, then lock, take take out the Roshan, take out some extra towers, and and the hex is gonna make it a lot easier for them to secure kills. Yeah, it, it will make it a lot easier for those pickoffs. I definitely agree there, and. With that up, I mean, it makes it so that not many of these Tongfu heroes are safe. They can't go on the tide, but he can crack in the sheep stick. But even so, DK could just get up map control using the hex as sort of something to scare Tongfu away from any engagement. TA isn't safe. You can blink in and hex. Get her before she can blink in or out. Get her before she can pop this BKB that she's building in. DK going to find themselves uh, under siege at this top lane. No, no vision, though, but now they have it. There's an early gem on Long DD, and that's what allows them to see this. Kung Fu Panda is going to get incinerated. They even use the Phantasm, so an, a fairly expensive kill during this time. Super picks up his Scythe device. They do have the Ravage. This may allow Tong Fu to push. We'll have to see how much do they want to commit to this. They're going up against the wall. Sure, it's only a level 1 wall. It's not the longest duration. The Illusions will be cleaned up by the Illuminate. Tons of damage coming out from both teams with the nukes. Just trying to get their uh, th their second tower of the game for Tong Fu. They gave up two basically for free earlier, and now they're really struggling to get this. Look how low Veronica drops. Surge, vacuuming back in mood, just trying to find a pickoff. Not able to do so, but DK defends the tower with four heroes, one dead. Great defensive play by them, and we're starting to see how aggravating this team is to push into when you don't have a pipe, when even your mechanism isn't complete yet. Yeah, mechanism is completed on the Keeper of the Lion. DK just going to maybe turn this push around. They'll see the Chaos Line at bottom lane. Titan and TP at home, I, they don't actually know that, but they'll quickly find out that there aren't many heroes at this top lane with the tower already low. This will be another tower uncontested going the way of DK. And uh, with that, all the T1 towers down, their map control is going to get a lot better. They can drop down some wards in this top lane if they want. And well, they probably don't really want to put down too many at the moment with the gem up on Disruptor. Uh, de-warding pretty proactively here, but for the Dire team, they just want to push out these lanes. The, the pushing power and the, the wave momentum is what's going to give them the map awareness they need. This is something we saw in the last game. It came a lot earlier from Zoe, but it's just using Sven as a bit of a siege engine, just sort of a battering ram to work down the towers with his ult. He's not as good as a Tiny with an Agonims or a Lone Druid, but it's one of his more underrated features. It's just that raw damage to bring down towers quickly, and the question is, do they really commit to this? It doesn't look like they want to yet, and with multiple tracks up, it means if DK commit, they know what they're getting into, and I don't think they like the looks of this picture, so they choose to back off. Yeah, DK, uh, the T2 fight is not going to be as easy going for them. They want to just be efficient, get get some more farm. They've, they've got all their neutrals, they've got the lanes pushed down. Once that's the case, they're not really doing anything unless they're definitely getting the tower. And with with the Disruptor ult or the Tide ulti, they don't want to take that fight. They back off, they farm up their nukes, wait for the lanes to push up, maybe go for a smoke gank sooner, even make an attempt at Roshan, being on the dire side. We saw it with Tong Fu and N9. The Roshan advantage played such a big part, and that's something DK can... Take whenever that with that Sven ultimate when it, when that's back up, which is coming fairly soon, and they're going to smoke. So this is either going to go into the Roshan pit or possibly just look for some kills at mid or top lane. This is interesting. Normally we see our, our Chaos Knights in China in China go either for a heart right away or for a BKB, but it's a completed mm -hmm. armlet that comes out for how more of an aggressive item gives you more damage. Now it, it's really the best DPS cost effective DPS item you can get for an illusion based strength here like this. Can he make it work though? There's a, lot, a decent amount of nukes, there's a lot of control on DK side. And now the smoke towards the Roshan pit for DK. Tong Fu, wise to their tricks, they're gonna do the same thing. Are they gonna find anybody? DK feels a little indecisive at the moment, maybe trying to bait this, but running back and forth, not just sitting comfortably up the hill. They're gonna, oh, not quite able to, to get any vision just yet. In fact, they're gonna spot burning, they're gonna look for the backstab, perhaps the ward on the high ground. QQQ spots them, and now both teams revealed, so a very anticlimactic ending to that 10 hero smoke, uh, as in yeah. the end, they all just back off. <laughs> and then, and then importantly for DK, they get the track down, so they're aware of what's going on, Moo was actually waiting, melded, instantly tries to get some damage down onto ROTK, he does back off, he also gets himself tracked up, so Tong Fu, 
going to struggle to find a good fight on their own terms now with two heroes tracked up. They probably just want to back off, farm out the top and bottom lanes, maybe tr try and push out this mid lane a bit more as well. They have to be wary though, if they go top, if they go bottom, this could open it up for DK to take Roshan, but I don't think DK's lineup can take it quick enough to try go in there. It's a big risk for them, even with the Sven ultimate there. I wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me if they just walk right into the pit as soon as they see this hero top. Uh, they don't have vision of that top burn, so they're not going to know Saint Chain is there, but it's not the quickest line. It's pretty quick. I mean, they have some decent damage. It's not It's not incredible. It's not like they have a Slardar or a lot of minus armor. They're thinking about it, though. Gods, you know it's on their minds when they're just hovering around the pit like this. Yeah. It's it's this mid-game sort of battle of positions. It's this tug of war always hovering around the Roshan pit. The Dire side trying to, trying to sneak it in when the lane's pushed out. The Radiant side trying to make sure that they keep the waves pushed out so they can contest any Roshan. And, and this is, for this now, is where, DK aren't going in, though. They're, they're looking to wait it out. This is where that Keeper of the Light really comes into play because Bernie yeah. can go top and, and then be right back in the fight when they need him. Absolutely, that's going to be a big thing here as we do see DK finding him from the high ground. Disruptor even blows the ultimate. This is not what Tongfu wanted here, and Manali gets dropped, but tied, still got the Tide Ravage. That's the main thing they need. This is apparently their cue to get aggressive, surging on in. Veronica still has Ravage, vacuum backwards, the wall drop. Not the ideal location, burning, starting it off with the Storm Bolt, but now stunned up for a moment. BKB still not used, decent Queen of Pain ult. Not amazing though, Moo and Bernie, BKB on BKB, and nobody dropping just yet. Everybody incredibly healthy, just look at the HP bars, Ravage still available, still not being used, but he's hexed, he doesn't get it off, what a play by Super, basically winning the fight for his team with a single play, incredible, and now more over the top, great decision making, nice arm with toggling, just to help keep that Chaos Knight alive, but the damage was done, it was Super, right as the Kraken shell is procking, comes in with the hex, and secures that kill, winning them the fight, getting them a couple trap kills, uh, track kills. Without the Sven, they can't go into Roche, but still uh, a really nice play by Super. Yeah, a fantastic. And I mean, I've criticized Tides in the past for not using the ultimate early enough, but that was nothing to do with the Tide there. He was looking so hard for an opening. He was he had to wait for the BKB to go off. None of the supports are going in. He was only ever going to maybe hit the Queen of Pain alone with the, the Tide Ravage. And, then later on, he was just about to pop it. DK stuns him. Oh, sorry, not DK. Sven stuns him the first time. And then Queen of Pain comes in with a hex as he's in cast animation. And no opening at all for Veronica to get the ultimate off. Perfect kiting by DK just would not allow him to even come close to getting the Ravage. They just knew that was the one thing which would lose in the fight. So they made sure it didn't get casted. We talked about it. It's, it's a very mobile lineup. They have the track. They have, they have the move speed that comes out from Drum, Surge. Uh, of course, the Sven's Warcry. It's a lineup that can kind of dance around you, and it makes it tough. It's one of the ways that we've seen teams try and deal with big, uh, big team fight oriented lineups is just pick mobility, pick the split push, uh, and and try and avoid getting clustered up. And so far, it's working. But long DD, a uh, little bit aggressive from that disruptor, <laughs> charging in first in the three heroes. Uh, but he does have some backup, and and he'll be okay. He also has the gem, which is the other reason you really yeah. want him to be careful. You want, to, you want to be careful, but you also need him near the front lines with a stunner like the Chaos Knight, because if Bounty Hunter is scouting heroes out, he can get those tracks off from the edge of the fight if Disruptor's not there to give vision. So you kind of want Disruptor just behind the Chaos Knight in the front lines with his positioning. Otherwise, Bounty Hunter just gets too much free vision and free scouting information and can get those tracks down without getting punished for it. Although ROTK so far... Getting picked off a few times when he come, come a bit too close to that gem or just poked his head in a bit too far. And we'll see DK, it looks like for now, they're happy to just keep on playing this farming game. They've got a gem of their own on this bounty hunter and they're also building up some BKBs, most notably on, on ROTK with the bounty hunter. Queen of Pain maybe going to go, for, yeah, Queen of Pain starting to build one as well. Is it just me or does DK seem a lot more tentative than, than what we've seen from them in the past and even earlier this game? Uh, I feel like... They're not really sure what they want to do. They are farming, like you said, and there's a next level of items that they want to get up. But DK, especially when that, that roster they had going into the International, they had played a lot of games together. And it was always very clear exactly what the game plan was going to be. Super, RTK, uh, and the other supports, creating space for burning, burning, farming all game. It's, we've seen burning doing a little bit of ganking and then going back to farming, you know, sort of messing around near the Roshan pit, but not fully committing. It, it, feels yeah. like, it definitely feels like a team that's going through some growing pains. No, DK uh, still trying to find out how to close out this game in some ways. I mean, they're, they're still a fairly even game, but they know they have a slight edge. They had the map control, and now they're like, 
okay, what do we want to do? Where do we want to go? Uh, they're going to find some wards placed down in their jungle here in a second if Bounty Hunter scouts, out, scouts, them, out, scouts them out with a gem, but even so, they're still just farming their own neutrals, farming the ancients. Tong Fu are getting time to get that next level of items up. Maybe it's going to be the BKB on CK, maybe a Heart of Trash with Heart as well as Armored of Mordekin. I kind of fear for DK in the late game. I mean, Sven in some ways is a good counter to the CK on paper with all this cleave, his AoE stun, but CK just packs a punch once he gets the heart. His, his raw HP and on those illusions as well as his hero is just really hard to bring down. And they haven't got any sort of AoE like Alina with the stun plus Dragon Sleep to sort of deal with them either. And the team that has Disruptor generally gets the initiation off. Moo, BKB is forced out from him. There's no support remotely nearby. I'm surprised he didn't just TP away immediately. Now he might pay for it. No, the support comes in. And DK, they force a precious BKB charge out of him. Now down to 8 seconds. And perhaps more importantly, it's on cooldown. And this is where DK looks to pressure that middle lane. So kind of given and open a little, a little bit Radiant's by Tang Fu. And let's see what they make of it. Burning doesn't really want to be at the front line series waiting for the creep wave <laughs> uh, as the catapult dies. But he could have done some chip damage to the tower. Really nice play by RTK. Sitting on the high ground to give him vision. That sets up the tracks. And that's going to make it hard for this tide to go in. But he's going to go in anyway. He doesn't care. Anchor smashed onto the creeps. The glyph forced out. And maybe DK will be content with this. Trap slowing multiple heroes. Really limiting their freedom. And they back off. So uh, they get the BKB charge off. They do a little bit of damage. They force out the glyph. But again, it's just, you know, a DK team. It's just, it's not clear exactly what they want to do. And I'm not sure they know themselves. It's, I feel like right now they just want Tongfu to make a mistake. And... What we saw from IG is they don't wait for their opponents to make mistakes, they force the mistakes. So it's definitely a difference in play style. And I don't, I don't feel DK are actually extending their lead right now, because they go into the enemy territory, they put down a ward, but Disruptor dewards it. Disruptor immediately gets some map control back for his team. There's vision around the Roshan pit. We may see another standoff soon hovering around this Roshan with Sven and DK super maybe trying to pick up this age. They're actually going to go in now, but Tongfu could make a play on this if they want. They're just missing the chaos sign of how at the top lane. And this is not a lot of farm for Bernie, to be totally honest. It's only a plate yeah. mail after the BKB. He's not even the lead farmer for his team. I mean, and he's also being out farmed by the Chaos Knight and the TA. You're right, on paper, he can counter Chaos Knight, but he needs a lot of items to do it. it, it he really needs to be ahead. I don't think being even is enough. Chaos Knight just scales better for the moment. He's not getting that farm. And DK gets scared off the Roshan. I mean, Chaos Knight had to come all the way from top lane. They're just going to jump on him. BKB and Hex, they're going on, and there's not enough damage, though. He can even toggle the armor on. Pops the ultimate. Is there going to be enough? Wall of Replica really poorly placed. It does catch Chaos Knight as he's trying to retreat. Chaos Knight may go down here. The armor toggle, though, can just keep him alive. And TA, Mu goes in, takes out the Darkseid. They're going to take out more. This is Tong Fu's fight to win until Super blinks out. And now DK going to try to turn it around with the track vision, with all that movement speed. If they feel they have an edge, they can use that movement speed to their advantage. But it's a one fight for Tong Fu, I feel. Absolutely. Killing, baiting out the Darkseer ult, killing off uh, the Darkseer. And it's not a one fight if DK gets Roshan, though. And, and it looks like they're heading towards it. They know Ravage is down. And I guess they feel their wall is less important than the Ravage. And just using that positional advantage as well, where, you know, Tang Fu has to run into the pit. They have to run past wards. And without Ravage, they don't feel confident enough to do it. So DK, it looks like a bad fight, but now they, they kind of turn it into a good one. Uh, mostly just by being on the dire side. And Super yeah, is going to take the Aegis. I like this because it's really not Burning who's the carry for this team right now. And I don't know if he will be even by the time the game ends. And Su yeah, Super is so important to have alive in these fights. His mobility is what's picking up any of these kills. Tong Fu, when they're sticking together, he's blinking around to the edges, picking off heroes. If anything, it's the, the Bounty Hunter with the Queen of Pain becoming the two crucial heroes for DK. You need to have track on as many as heroes as possible. Sven will just... Offer a bit of right-click damage here and there. Maybe offer a way to deal with the Chaos Knight. The actual, actually, the Warcry plus 16 armor for your entire team is actually going to be very big against the Chaos Knight damage in the late game as well as Templar Assassin who offers a lot of minus armor. So in some ways, the Sven Warcry, this could be like a sort of semi-carry utility Sven just because of that ability. He's also going to have an Assault Crest up very soon. So offering a lot of plus armor for his team. And that helps deal with his, some of his weaknesses, which is his relative lack of mobility. In that last fight... It didn't feel like Burning could really stay locked onto a hero, even having track and Warcry and all the move speed items, like the drums being popped by both teams. He just couldn't quite stay close, so... Assault Caress, the nice thing is, it, it fits into that utility style of where, simply by existing and being near your team, being near the enemy, you provide a lot of, a lot of benefits. So you're right, I think, yeah. that, I think that's what we're going to see this game.
this is and this is a BKB for the Chaos Knight, and now oh. the Assault Caress becomes especially important for Bernie to complete. I I agree, and right now DK, uh, despite the last fight not going their way, I feel they've got up some big items, and with the Pipe Vanguard on Darkseid, they're going to have the Pipe Mech at their disposal. They've got a lot of ability to just outlast their opponents in these fights, even with their B when their BKBs are worn off. It's going to be really hard for Tide to get off a Ravage in that early stages of the fight. We've seen in the past when DK try to siege their opponent, Tide goes to the front lines, but Keeper the Light just illuminates him down, chips weighed him, and once Tide's at half HP, it's really risky for him to be on the front lines. Sure, you've got the Kraken Shell, but once you're already low, you can get Pop not given a chance to cast off the Ravage like we saw earlier on. So these next few fights positions are going to be crucial for Tide Hunter. And uh, the BKB duration is also getting shorter for both teams. That's going to be the other big thing that comes into play the later this game goes. Yeah, seven seconds on the Templar Assassin. and it's a fresh BKB for Chaos Knight, so that one's one to yeah. keep an eye on. An eye on Burning. It's down to eight seconds. The Queen of Pain blinks in, catches out Moo, hexing him up to start this fight. But Chaos Knight is here, and Chaos Knight is strong with the Phantasm. One with the Force, he is I'm just going to work right now. Nice static storm. Not enough though. The war cry just turns it around. The armor too much for this Fen, and in fact, it's burning. Who in the end is just driving it back. Two, one hero dead, but it's the Tide Hunter. That means team fight is over. Super cleans up one, and this is where that chase does come into play. Blinking on forward, shadow striking Moo, trying to slow him down with the traps, but eventually he should fall. Unless, unless, nope, he will fall. So three kills and sanction caught out. This is the really nice thing about the Bounty Hunter, and I think why we're seeing it so much, is if you ever start winning a fight, you really win that fight. You don't just get one or two kills, you get three, you get four, and then you get the gold as well. Make it another Sanjing at bottom lane, caught out in no man's land, uh, maybe looking for a cheeky kill on the Queen of Pain there with his ultimate, not going to find it, and I can't. Um, I just can't believe how little damage Chaos Knight was doing. It wasn't the maxed out Phantasm yet, but he had two illusions, he had the armlet on, BKB, and just stormed in on Darkseer. Darkseer was just like shrugging it off. You've got Vanguard. He, he reached about 25 armor with the plus 16 from Warcry. He had so much plus armor and Chaos Knight was hardly denting him, doing maybe like 50 damage a hit or something completely negligible. And this is going to be really hard for Tong Fu to take fights because of how little damage that their two main carries are going to be doing. And it's not like they can focus Bernie. <laughs> He's got a BKB. Yeah. He's very tanky. He's not really a hero that you can count on bursting down. It's a naturally tanky hero who's got good strength gain and, of course, the war cry. So what do you do now? Well, you pop your BKB and the Courier might die for this at least, but not going to focus on the Courier. Stormbolt connecting on Veronica. No Ravage for him. The nice static storm catching out Super. Super might fall, barely living, skirting, living life on the edge, and now burning finally to drop. How's BKB is down. Big, big Illuminated Blast coming through, Ooh. catching almost everyone doing absolutely insane damage. Sang Shane next in line. Will he be tracked before he falls? Maybe not. Glimpsing on back. The fight turned around. DK fighting that entire time under the tower. And in the end, God, does it cost them. Score now 15 to 18. A very even game. Super even picking up a Shiva's. I think he just got that during the fight. Cannot believe in the midst of all that, the courier lived. <laughs> <laughs> More armor coming the way of DK. This Queen of Pain is going to be so hard to bring down. Mu does get a cheeky little deny in the bottom T1 tower. They managed to take out the Queen of Pain ages there. Laguna Blade getting thrown out as Lena's last wishes before she she dropped. And, uh, well, Super is just getting ridiculously farmed here, I feel, with the Shiva's Guard pickup. Level 20 as well. You throw a War Cry on that. You have the plus armor from the mech, the Assault Crest. That's sort of 40... 40 plus armor on a Queen of Pain. There's no way they're killing her without using magic damage coming out and from maybe the CK, CK chain stun with Alina Laguna Blade. And BKB and Blink and track yeah. movement speed, but only oh super, super actually not sure not sure what's going on there. I think that was a misclick. Maybe meant to pop the BKB, but doesn't need to in the end and now gets a DD rune. Double damage. Well, with this. Super, Super seems content to just keep on farming. I mean, why not? When you're already this farm, you may as well get that next level of items up. It's kind of mushy as carry Queen of Pain. I remember when it, whenever Orin sort of get him the Queen of Pain, he sort of plays it as their hard carry. He, Super hasn't gone for the DPS items, the MKB, the crit, anything of that sort yet, but maybe with his next pickup, we'll see something along those lines. Uh, Sven with an assault crest build up now, so he's I mean he's sort of being pushed back into that two or three position. This isn't the hard carry of burning. This is all about super. It is, and this is something that we had been talking about and sort of hearing coming into 
coming into DK's appearance of this tournament, which is that Super has been playing at incredibly high level in scrims. I think uh, I even heard that he's beating Ferrari in, in, some ma in some practice matches in the mid lane, so he's really stepped up his game since the international. Certainly a respectable solo player in the Chinese scene, but I don't think really viewed as a, a premier player by most, by most yep. in the scene. And what we're seeing today, he's playing incredibly well. Yeah, it's not all about your Ferrari supers proving. And with this, Tong Fu, where do they go from here? It looks like they're kind of just just trying to get that next level of items. You've got the Templar Assassin. Daedalus coming. It looks like, actually, he's already bought the Demon Head, so he's going to have a Daedalus this next fight. Maybe with some big crits here, we could see Tong Fu taking some team fights. Yeah, and if you get some nice side blade splash, that can really go to work for you. Uh, there are some heroes that have low armor, at least when the war cry and the assault caress are not there. So yeah. if he can somehow find a way to splash through from a hero like the Keeper of the Light, that could help a little bit to wear these tankier heroes down. But it's hard to find those kinds of angles and get that positioning right in the late game in general, and then especially against such a mobile squad as DK. It's it's a tough pickle. It really after that one fight bottom where they just had so much armor from the span, and then CK jumps in. It was a really nice static storm in Kinetic Field as well from Long DD. When that fight didn't go their way, I think Tong Fu has just sort of hit this brick wall. Where to win it, they just need, they need a, like not just the Daedalus, the Daedalus on, on the TA, but maybe even another level of items, the Heart on the Chaos Knight. Maybe even towards a Manta. I mean, I just, it, it does seem like yeah. they need a lot more than they have right now. And will they get it? It's not clear that they will. I think if Chaos Knight gets another big item, as well as Templar Assassin, uh, I guess Desolators maybe next. I'm not too sure about the late game Desolators. Maybe even goes for an Assault Crest of her own to try and negate some of that. Um, to negate basically the Assault Crest on the Sven. If they can both get another big item. Late game Tongfu still have a good chance. They're still definitely in this game. Apart from the Queen of Pain, the XP is pretty much even between the two teams. It's just Super who is level 22. Almost reaching that max level already. Uh, nothing really coming close to that over on the Radiant side. Level 19 on TA, not bad. Uh, there's a bit of a gold difference between the two teams, but it's it's just one maybe one big item on one of these carries for Tong Fu. They have got the the CK as well as TA. Their only real competition late game is going to be the Queen of Pain. Sven a lot easy to deal with late game with being able to cut him around. And Sven, he's picked up Assange. He's going to be going for a Heaven's Halberd, I imagine. <laughs> as though burning weren't already hard enough to kill. <laughs> this yeah. this is going to make it nigh impossible. You, you really can't... That's the question right now, is how, who does Tongfu focus? Keeper of the Light is always going to be way in the back lines. Bounty Hunter's only real job is to get tracks off. Sven is incredibly tanky. Darkseer is incredible. well, not incredibly tanky, but pretty difficult to bring down. And then Super is basically immortal. He's probably the hardest hero of all to kill. I mean, what do you do? How do you, who do you focus? Or, or if, you, if you don't go for team fights, then how do you find some openings against DK? They're really just pushing all the lanes and... And, you know, it's the starvation tactics that they're applying to Tang Fu right now. They are, but they're not doing it as well as they could because of the gem on the Disruptor. So I feel, even though they're, they're trying to limit what Tong Fu can do, Tong Fu is still getting up some items. Uh, Sanj actually is going to be the, the, is the pickup for Chaos Side. This is potential Sanj and Yasha, maybe a Heaven's Harbour of his own to get some evasion. I mean, Queen of Pain does big right-click damage here in the late game. Sven, is, of course, does as well. Uh, so Heaven's Harbour, not a bad pickup here in the late game. But by no any means, and Tongfu is still getting farm. They're being as efficient as possible in their own jungle. The problem is going to be Roshan now going to be the next target for DK, and I, this is going to be hard to contest for Tongfu. Uh, and you know, it's again, it's burning, pushing one side of the map. Always can be recalled back to the Roshan pit if they need his services. If Tongfu look to contest it, there, this is the keeper of the light. I mean, if you want to be as efficient as possible as a support. He allows you to do that, so I think that's the big reason why we're seeing him. Obviously, he's got a lot of other uses, uh, giving you that mana, allowing you maybe not to have to get as many arcane boots, uh, and having the great anti-push and teamfight AoE damage, but it's mainly this recall at this point in the game uh, that, that, that DK is just using to, to be as efficient and effective with their time as possible. And Queen of Pain, super, 6k gold. I am i don't know, what do you get next as a Queen of Pain here? All the items in the game? <laughs> I... I mean, I, th I, I, th I think you're at a point where you go for some right-click damage. I, I don't think you need any more, yeah. any more lockdown or any more caster items. He's already got the Hex. He's already got the Sheep. As he's tanky, he's hard to bring down. And he's got Burning to just be the frontline presence. So make this your late-game damage dealer. And I, I think it really suits the hero roles pretty well. Like you said, 
burning a lot easier to kite than super, so... I would like to see maybe a Daedalus, maybe an MKB. Yep. Uh, especially if Chaos Knight is getting a Heaven's Halberd here, he's going to have enough gold for that in a second. You can negate that armor with the MKB. Maybe Super's waiting to see if it's uh, Sanjin Yasha or the Heaven's Halberd. And DK now doing a better job at controlling the enemy's jungle, trying to starve them just a bit more. But Tongfu, they're grouped up at top, and this is this is what Tongfu want to do. They want to go for this counter push. So if DK try push bottom, moves there to maybe take a T2 tower at top. He's got backup as well, so if they try and jump him, Burning's going in here. He's got the Aegis. He's actually just going to farm his own neutrals. He doesn't want to go too aggressive at this top lane, though. He is going to reveal himself, and Tongfu could make a go in this, but I feel it's a very big risk under the tower. They are, they are a bit behind at this point, and I'm not sure it's the yeah. time to be getting aggressive, at least at least not with DK having full knowledge of your aggression. Uh, and it looks like they're not going to opt for it in the end. Yeah, I, I don't think that was the time to force a fight. I think this is it for DK. This is where they, they're going to go for the Raxes. They've got the Aegis on Sven still, and he's going to get recalled in just a second to meet up with his team at the bottom lane. I just want to point out, Long Didi still has this gem, which he bought when he just had boots and, and a wand at, like... 15 minutes, 10 minutes into the game, and he's still holding on to it 47 minutes. Pretty impressive stuff from him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those little victories for a support player, but just want to give oh, him a yeah. shout out for that, because it's pretty hard to hold on to a gem for this long. <laughs> no, it's ama amazing that he's, he's done that. And it, the gem has easily paid for itself. Tongfu is just... Without this gem, they'd, they probably would have been out of the game already. They've denied so much information from DK, and I feel... ROTK hasn't been as proactive the last 20 or so minutes, keeping heroes tracked up, keeping that knowledge and scouting information there. And it's partly because of the gem, and it's also just because DK have sort of sat back and played a more passive type of game. So we'll see what DK want to do now. Super spent some of his gold. What is it going to be? Um, he's bought a Demon Ed, so this is going to be Daedalus or the MKB that you mentioned. Maybe a Rapier. <laughs> he does. It well, they gave, no. the, they gave the Aegis to Sven. Yeah, you're right. I was thinking that. When we're we're not going to see it. If, Pain, if Queen of Pain picks up this Aegis, I'm calling a Divine Rapier, but unfortunately, it wasn't the case. It, it's not really DK Dota. I mean, it's something we'd love to see, but they're more of a safe team, I think. Uh, I mean, most of the Chinese teams, I'm not sure we'd see a Rapier from them, unless it's a really... Unless it's a situation where you desperately need one. Generally, if you're in the losing position, I think. Look at what Long TD is doing right now, though. Is <laughs> he... Does that give you any vision? It oh. does not seem to, unfortunately. Maybe he was they now see it with the, the trap, but it's too late. Sanjin got caught out. This is the opening DK we're waiting for. They found Sanjin. He gets completely walled to bits. Wall of Replica goes down. There's a buyback for the Lina, though. That could be important for Tong Fu, but if Tong Fu lose CK, they're in trouble, and they do. Now DK, gonna look to go high ground, gonna look for some more pickoffs, or at least look to push out this bottom creep wave, maybe go uphill with this. The Wall of Replica is on cooldown, but... I feel DK may have found the opening they were after there. Tongfu just lingering around that ward spot just a bit too long. Yeah, it was almost like Long TD was messy around. I think I jinxed him uh, <laughs> when I said they hadn't lost the gem yet. Although he hasn't lost it, kind of cost his team there, trying to be so aggressive with the D warding. And DK, the siege begins, but without the wall, they can't fully commit to this. Also, two BKBs on cooldown and two crucial BKBs. And they're going to sit back for the moment. This gives the CK time yep. to respawn now. He's not going to come back to life with his Phantasm, so that's another big spell they don't have. What they do have is Ravage, and with BKBs on cooldowns, it's something to be reckoned with. And a lot of these heroes for Tongfu have buyback. Templar Assassin with a lot of gold. Well, Templar Assassin, the only one with buyback. That's one doing all the damage for Tongfu, so this isn't going to be as clear-cut as DK expected to be pushing on in. BKB is up on Sped. He's just trying to chip away at this tower. He's going to completely take it out, and now Tongfu... Rax has exposed CK back alive, though. I think DK either back off here or look for another another good engagement. And uh, that may come with their next level of items, with Queen of Pain bringing her damage item, with Sven about to pick up a day Dallas of his own. <laughs> I, uh, did you see how hard Bernie was hitting in the last fight? He, he wasn't really... He wasn't scratching Tung Fu earlier, but now he's, look, now he's just mauling Look at this them. career. Look at this career for DK. Like... <laughs> <laughs> that's with a de de that's with a Daedalus on the ground as well. Like it's like, come on guys, we got we got no room left. What's what's up with this? Yeah, someone... Darkseid with an Aghanim scepter. Okay, that's what the Ags is for. That's what they need. <laughs> this is uh, it's it's starting to get to that point where DK has such a crushing advantage in items, map control, uh, and team fight supremacy. It's it's gonna be real hard to mess this up. I think that's the way to put it. 
It is, yeah. It, and their heroes, despite the late game power of CK and TA, I just feel their heroes with all this bonus armor is just proven to be a lot. And the track gold, I mean, and negated. those items from the track gold as well. Yeah. It's the Warcry plus 16 armor to all these heroes, the Assault Chris as well, plus 5 armor. The mech gives, I think, plus, three, plus 5 armor as well, so... Oh, I don't know. Sorry, mech only gives plus 2 armor. It's plus 5 armor to the hero, but plus 2 armor when you activate it. Yeah, Tongfu grouping up towards the bottom side of the map. You, you can almost sense their, this sense of the, the urgency this team has right yeah. now. And, and they need I to find something soon. Fight. I think they should look for his fight. Maybe maybe DK get cocky and don't bring their entire team. Maybe they take they find themselves in a numbers advantage because one hero is off farming. I think well, Tongfu need to take a bit of a risk here. They, Otherwise, they just slowly fall apart at their base. Well, they also know that they, the Aegis is down. If they wrote down the time, which presumably they did, they know it's right after six minutes. Yep. They know it's down, so you can't wait for the next one because DK is almost certainly going to get that. They just have the better map control and, and pushing power at this point, so... It is time to force something for Tongfu. Uh, odd to say, but... Or a little bit odd and to say, anyway. But, but they're it's, forcing it. it's odd to say, and it's also unfortunate to say because DK's just now picked up all those huge items we saw on the Courier, so... In theory, this is going to look a lot uglier for them the next team fight. but items only do so much. I think a lot more is going to come down to the positioning and timing of spells. If they can pick off a hero like Darkseid before he gets the wall down, or if he hits, he plants the wall and most of them avoid it. I think Tongfu can win a fight using the Ravage, using some well-timed disables, and if they can land the Disruptor Ultimate, they can still win a fight despite these big item pickups for DK. Items can only do you so much. They're going to need everything to go right, and I think they're also going to yeah. need BKBs not to be used effectively, because if those BKBs are up, what from Tongfu really is going to hurt them? You know, maybe the damage from the Chaos Knight, but even then you're looking at evasion, on burning, you're looking at a team that has tons of armor. It, it's got to come down to the BKBs not being used at the right time, or heroes getting caught without being able to pop them. That's that's pretty much the only way I can see Tongfu winning a fight at this point. Now, like you said, anything is possible. We don't want to suck all the drama out of this game, but it's going to be tough. It's Tongfu got to play this one absolutely perfectly as DK pressure down that middle lane. Bernie with one great swipe. Blake in Ravage catches out Bernie. Very tanky though. Back you back in. Amazing Queen of Pain ult. Great damage from Tongfu. Will it be enough though? Big dive from the Bounty Hunter. And it just doesn't quite look like it. They haven't dealt with Super. Now Moo next in line is going to drop to this. Good damage and Super continues to be completely out of control. Now diving aggressively after Sang Chain. Nice light strike array to try and prevent this aggression. Move back into the fight, doing what he can, which is to say a decent amount, but not enough critting for a thousand, but really hard to land those crits on these heroes. And now the Rax yeah. under siege. Rax to drop quickly. Rax will go down the kinetic field, but Moo really doesn't want to jump into that. Doesn't want to force this two heroes back you back together. Chaos Knight still looking for an opening. It's going to get 357. That's two heroes. Super is godlike. Super has still not been addressed. The super problem continues to grow. Continues to get out of control. Sang Chain next in line. All the supports picked off one by one. The Ghost Scepter even used here just to try and live through it all. And it looks like he will survive. Super too big to fail at this point. Super shows some mercy to this lane. I decided not to blink and scream. Goes back for the Raxes though, and with all these heroes down, Tide respawning. So just Tide and Lena, they're not going to be able to deal with Super at this point. Super with 8k freaking gold. I mean, Burning is by no means the carry this game. He was that frontline's tank. It was a good decision for Tongfu to focus him first, because he was the one who didn't have buyback. He's the poor hero. Killing Queen of Pain would just see Queen of Pain buyback get called, recalled back into the fight by the Keeper of the Light, so... It was the best fight Tongfu could have hoped for, and they're finding themselves just getting completely torn apart. Crit from Super, takes out Lena. Second set of Raxus goes down, and it looks like DK are going to be poised to take game number one. GG call from Long DD. I gotta say, it's, like you said, it's it's the Super show. It, it, Super really, you know, regaining some of that form that he had in 2011 when DK was just by far the powerhouse in, in Dota 1. Uh, and it, it's something where in Dota 2, he just wasn't showing... That he played well at the International, he played well in, in Dota 2 events, but was not was not a dominant player the way he had been in the past. And we're seeing him sort of rise back to prominence in this game. He played easily the best player on the field in this game. Just perfect positioning, great decision making, really carrying a DK team to victory that at times, despite having the golden experience advantage, didn't seem all that decisive. But in the end, AT1 and 5, Queen of Pain. Uh, you know, showing that he, he too, along with Burning, can be pretty fearsome on that hero.
Well, burning two million dollars in the fantasy league, one five and six. Ouch. Hmm. I do have super though. That's the good news. Super is on my team, but um, I don't know if burning. I guess he'll probably go. I don't know if he'll even get positive points for that. Although I imagine compared to other fans who get played as support often, he's got a lot of farm here, but. More importantly, DK take game one. They're going to go into game number two, and this is a this is a matchup they want to win. After drawing against Orange, if you want to finish in that top two, you need to get the wins. They give you the three points, and they want to take game number two as well. And they look they look like they can do it. They look like the more experienced team. They look like they are coming into their own with this new lineup. They also look like they enjoy that Queen of Pain quite a bit. This is two games where Queen of Pain has carried DK now, so... Let's see if they get their hands on it again. Let's see if it works out again in game number two. Guys, stay tuned. You've been watching the G1 League group stages. Day number three action coming your way. I'm um, starting to lose track of the days at this point as it's just getting sunny out, right? As my day is starting to wind down, but we have another game coming up. Stay tuned for that. Tong Fu versus DK, your concluding decisive match of the day. Can they make it a clean to a sweep on the part of DK, or will Tong Fu bounce back? We'll find out soon after these brief messages. Uh, I'm LD, of course, he is God. Thank you very much for watching us together. We're David.